In this episode of Retro Now, I'm going to be taking a look at this, the original handheld version of the Evercade Retro Games console. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Retro Now. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at this, the original handheld version of the Evercade Retro Games console. Now I say original because Evercade have recently announced that this is being discontinued and replaced by a new handheld called the Evercade EXP. As you might expect, the EXP is more powerful, it has a larger screen and has inbuilt Wi-Fi. Now what that means is that the existing handheld that I have here, uh, they're starting to appear more frequently on second-hand sites like eBay. More importantly, I've noticed the price of them starting to go down a little bit. I guess this is existing owners looking to sell these machines to generate funds to buy the new handheld. However, what that means is if you're looking to get into the Evercade system on a budget, now is a really good time to do so. I picked up this particular example a couple of weeks ago for around about £60. It's a premium pack, and when you consider it comes complete with three cartridges, each of which retails for around about £20, that means you're getting the console for almost nothing. Anyway, let's take a look at this now, let's do a bit of an unboxing, and then we'll take a look at the machine in a bit more detail before going on to have a look at some of the games that are included in this pack. Before we do the unboxing, let's just take a quick look at the history of this model of Evergade. Development of it began back in 2018 and it was officially announced in April of 2019. Although it was initially scheduled to be released in the fourth quarter of 2019, it didn't actually get a release until May of 2020, just as the world was going into lockdown with the COVID-19 pandemic. Now this may in fact have worked to Evercade's advantage because there's suddenly lots more people with time on their hands looking for things like this to occupy themselves with. I know at the time the Switch quickly started to go out of stock or went up in price, uh, and this looked like a really viable alternative at the time. Now to be honest, upon its release I wasn't really that interested in the Evercade. You see, the Evercade's but developed by a UK-based company called Blaze Entertainment, and they were better known to me for producing single-purpose retro gaming devices. And by that, I mean sort of fairly cheaply made devices that came preloaded with a fixed set of games from a single console, such as the Sega Mega Drive or the Atari 2600. Blaze had also previously released a couple of devices that were very similar to the Evercade in concept. The first of these was called the Game Gadget, and that appeared back in 2012, and at the time it was being sold as the iPod of retro gaming and instead of buying your games on cartridge, they were sold through an online store. More recently, Blaze has released a device called the Blaze Tab, and that is essentially an Android-based tablet with inbuilt gaming controls, and again, this is backed up by downloadable games. Now, as far as I can see, neither of these appear to have had much success, and I kind of assumed at the time that the Evergade would probably quickly suffer the same fate. However, that hasn't been the case, and the Evercade has been relatively successful, especially with the retro gaming community. And that's in no small part due to the people behind the Evercade, who've been keen to learn from and avoid mistakes of Blaze's past, and they appear to have been listening to the community and acting upon it. Any early issues with the Evercade were quickly resolved through firmware updates. Okay, so the first thing that strikes you when you see this is how nice the packaging is for it. Uh, the box is encased by a full colour sleeve, which is very attractively designed, and straight off this feels like a premium product. Okay, so we uh, take a look at the box in a bit more detail. On the top here we've got an uh, image of the Evercade itself, along with some characters from some of the games. On the side here we've got details of the individual games on the cartridges. Over on this side we've got details of the cartridge themselves. So we've got Atari Collection 1 with 20 games, Interplay with 6 games, and Namco Museum with 11 games. On the back we've got some details of, again, the cartridges and the unit itself. So it's got a 720p output using HDMI, so you can plug that into your television uh, with the right cable. Uh, it's got 4 hour battery life and it's got a 4.3 inch screen on it. Okay, so let's uh, open this box up and see what you get inside. So taking off the sleeve we're presented with a really nice um, red box with a white outlined image of the other cage unit itself. Opening it up and on top here we have the unit. Uh, that's uh, looking. That looks really nice. It's uh, it's kind of retro in its look. Uh, and the color scheme is very reminiscent of a Nintendo Famicom, red and white. Uh, we've got the D-pad here, and our four buttons. On the top here, I've got two shoulder buttons, uh, on/off switch, and a mini HDMI port, so you can plug your cable in there if you've got the right ones. Cartridge slot. On the back here, um, and then on the bottom, we've got volume controls, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, 
and a micro USB connector there, so you can plug plug that in to charge it up, and also to connect it up to your computer if you need to do updates. Underneath that, we've got a couple of quick start guides. Uh, they look the same. Not sure why I've got two in here. Uh, there's not really much information in those, but worth a quick look through before you get going. And then on the bottom, we've got the cartridges themselves. So we've got first up here, we've got the Namco Museum cartridge. So a nice clamshell case on that. And then inside you've got the cartridge itself and a little full colour manual. And these are what make, make you know, the collecting these quite attractive. Uh, we've got Atari Collection 1 here. So that's a mixture of uh, 2600 and 7800 games from Atari. Uh, there's 20 on there. Uh, going back to Namco Museum, so just a quick look at what we've got on there. We've got Galaxian, uh, Pac-Man, Xavius, uh, Mappy, Dig Dug, Star Luster, Battle Cars, Metal Marines, Liberal Rabble, Quad Challenge, and Mappy Kids. So there's uh, uh, 11 games on there in total. Uh, and then we've finally got the Interplay Collection 1. So that's got things like uh, Clay Fighter on there, Earthworm Jim, uh, Battle Chess, Boogerman, Incantation and Titan. And lastly, there's space for the micro USB cable, which wasn't included with the machine I bought. Okay, so now we're done with the unboxing. Let's take a look at the uh, unit itself in a little bit more detail. Um, first impressions, much like the packaging, uh, it feels like a premium product. Uh, the plastic. Uh, certainly looks and feels to be of uh, a good quality. It looks fairly sturdy. The unit itself, you know, feels quite sturdy. It's quite quite hefty in the hand to feel. Got a bit of weight to it, which uh, again makes it feel like a premium product, and that's very nice. Um, the only thing to note is that the screen is also plastic, so that might be prone to scratches. Although this unit is second hand, I, I don't know how much use it had by the previous owner, but uh, certainly there are no scratches apparent on it. Um, and it was one of the things I was a little bit concerned about uh, buying one of these unseen off, uh, you know, second hand off, off of eBay. But uh, no, it's fine. No worries there. So it, it must, you know, be reasonably durable. Um, you can buy screen protectors for these. So that's one possibility. Uh, and the other thing you can do is buy yourself a case. Um, I bought this particular case off of uh, Amazon a couple of weeks ago for just £12. Um, it's a custom case for the Evercade. It's got room for cartridges. A pouch to keep your USB cable in um, and the Evercade itself fits nice and snug in there. Uh, it's a hard case so that'll offer up uh, a you know, good amount of protection if you're uh, using your Evercade for uh, portably taking it out. Um, again it, it looks attractive, I like that colour scheme of red and white, um, very reminiscent of the uh, Nintendo Famicom, the original uh, Nintendo Famicom. Uh, it's also uh, quite like if you've got a Raspberry Pi 400, the, the keyboard-based um, Raspberry Pi. It's the same sort of colours that they use on that as well. Um, there is a, a black and red version as well. That was uh, the one that came out for people who pre-ordered these early on. And uh, Evercade also did a limited run, I think, of a, a thousand uh, purple units as well. Um, some of the reviews I've read on, on the purple units say that that has a slightly uh, better screen, slightly brighter. Um, but other than that, they're the same in every respect other than other than the, the colour of the units themselves. Okay, so let's take a look at this in, in a bit more detail. Uh, on the bottom here, as I said earlier, you've got uh, your volume controls, plus and minus, up and down for volume. Uh, there's a 3.5mm jack there to put headphones in if you want to play and, and not disturb the rest of the family while they're watching telly. Uh, and then you've got a micro uh, USB connector there, uh, so not USB-C unfortunately. Um, which would have been nice considering we're all moving over to USB-C cables these days but for the moment um, uh, Evercade have used uh, micro USB on there. Uh, you'll need to do that if you, uh, if you want to charge up the unit you need to plug that in there uh, and also if you want to do any firmware updates you'll need to plug the connector in there so you can connect this up to your computer. Um, there's no Wi-Fi built into this unit or this particular unit um, which means you do need to, if you want to do any firmware updates, you do need to cable it up to your computer and run a program on there to update the unit. Uh, okay, looking on the front here, we've got the D-pad. So that's uh, that's very similar to the D-pad you'll find on the controllers for, say, the, the Sega Mega Drive or the Genesis or the Sega Saturn. Um, apparently, Blaze uh, went through something like 20 
different variations of the D-pad before they settled on this one. And that, and that shows it's, it's, you know, it looks like it might be quite spongy to the feel, but actually those buttons have got, or the directions are fairly definitive on there. So that's, and it does feel really nice to, to control with. Over here on the right hand side, we've got our buttons. So these are like the clear design buttons, which I'm, uh, I'm not usually a big fan of, but it works quite well on this particular unit. Uh, there has been some criticism because the buttons are, or the labeling of the buttons is reverse to what you might find on something like the NES or the SNES. So let's have got controller here from my uh, SNES Mini. As you can see, the A and B buttons are, and X and Y buttons are the opposite way around uh, on the other case as, as to how they would be on here. Uh, I've got three buttons on here as well, for one for menu, one for select, and one for start. And they feel like they might be uh, micro switches in there. And then we've got uh, stereo speakers on the front here for games that support that. Uh, otherwise, uh, a lot of the games aren't stereo as well, being, being older games, so they'll just push out mono signal through both uh, speakers. On the top here, we've got our shoulder buttons, just uh, one set of shoulder buttons on each side. Uh, again, very nice clicky micro switches there, uh, and they f they sort of fall quite nicely in into reach with your fingers as well when you're holding the unit. I mean, actually, the shape of the unit is really nice. It does sort of fit very nicely into the hands. Uh, then we've got our on-off switch here, and then finally um, HDMI output here. Uh, this is a mic uh, no uh, mini HDMI connector. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck with that, I'm going to have to be honest. I bought a cable for that. I actually got the official Raspberry Pi cable because it was a nice white cable matched the unit itself. Um, and although I can plug that in, um, it appears to fit fine. Um, but it doesn't actually work unless I physically hold the cable in and push it in firmly. Uh, as soon as I let go of it, it, uh, it disconnects the signal. Um, I could try another cable, but uh, you know I haven't done so far. Um, but I'm not really using this to play on on the television anyway, so it's not a problem for me massively. But your mileage may vary on that. You may um, have to go through uh, a couple of HDMI HDMI cables before you find one that fits and works okay for you. I have uh, seen a lot of other reviewers on this as well complaining of similar things. Um, you know they've got signals working, but quite close to yeah your right hand uh, shoulder button there and if you knock it um, it disconnects the HDMI signal which uh, is doubly bad because when you plug the uh, cable in or take it out it resets the unit so if you're midway through a game and you knock it it's not just a case of it, it disrupts your signal it actually resets the unit. Right now let's turn our attention to the cartridges and some of the games that come in this pack so we first up we have the Namco Museum Collection 1 cartridge then we've got the Atari Collection 1 and finally, we've got the Interplay Collection one. If you're looking for an even cheaper entry into owning an Epicade handheld, there's also a starter pack available, which only contains the Namco Museum Collection one cartridge. Each of the cartridges we have here come from the console series of games, uh, signified by the red packaging. There's currently three series, so we have, have the console ROMs, then we've got arcade ROMs, they come in purple packaging, and then there's a new series of uh, cartridges coming out that will be in blue packaging and they'll be for home computers. And the first of those will contain games uh, from the Commodore 64. The Evercade runs emulators that have been licensed by Blaze for all. They've been custom built in some cases. And the consoles that they can play games for uh, are the Atari 2600, the Atari 7800, the Atari Lynx, the NES and the Super NES. Each of the cartridges comes in these clamshell uh, packs. So we take a look at the typical example here, the Namco Museum one. Um, you got the cartridge itself. It's very similar in size to a Game Boy cartridge, an original Game Boy cartridge. And then you get a full color manual. Uh, so that just gives you a little bit of information about, uh, in this case, the publisher. And then each of the games that are on the cartridge, so you get a full color screenshot there, a little bit about the buttons uh, or the controls and some uh, bumps about the game itself and some tips there. And as I say, it's got, uh, it's got some details for each of the games on the cartridge. And that's really nice, adds to the collectability of these cartridges, as does the numbering. So each of the cartridges in, in the series has uh, individual numbers. 
So in this case, we I think we've got cartridges one, two, and four. Um, here I have cartridge number four from the uh, arcade ROM collection. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the games themselves, starting off with the uh, Namco Museum collection uh, first. So the cartridge itself just slots into the back of the unit here. Um, it's quite a nice tight fit with the connector. I have heard some criticism of uh, these cartridges being a bit of a snug fit at times, but I think, um, you know, once they've been in an, a new cartridge has been in and out of the unit a couple of times, then uh, they tend to be okay. Uh, so let's uh, switch this on and start up the unit. And start off here with the Blaze splash screen. And it just takes a few seconds to power up and get through this stage. And there we are, we're then into the menu uh, that shows all of the games on the particular cartridge and just scroll through with the D-pad. Um, the screen itself is an LCD screen. Um, I think it's probably the weaker part of this unit, um, but it's still not a bad display. Brightness could, you know, could do with being a little tiny bit brighter. The viewing angles, um, you know, whilst not uh, brilliant, they're not bad either. Uh, and I think the quality of the screen is is better than you would find on some of Blaze's other uh, devices. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. I, I find uh, if you view it just slightly tilted forward, then it, it's uh, it's perfectly okay. Okay, so we just go into the menu, go through the menu first, have a look at that. So uh, there's a few settings here we've got to go through, uh, starting off with the display. And we can adjust the brightness there. Uh, next option is to set scan lines on or off. And I'm going to set those on. And we've got the timeout for the screen dimming there from anything from sort of off altogether, 15 seconds through to one minute. Uh, then we then got the option to have uh, the battery percentage on or off. So up there in the top left hand corner. And then we can set the aspect ratio. So um, this screen is a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but we can adjust it from having its full screen, pixel perfect, or the original ratio of the game. Uh, some further setting there of uh, scan lines. And then we can set what bezels we want if we've uh, set that screen sort of pixel perfect um, or original. And we can set some artwork to show in the bezels or we can turn that off. Next up, we can change the theme. Uh, so we can have it as uh, a red theme there. And we've got some sound options. Uh, so we've got the master volume, um, background music volume, and sound effects volume. Then we can change the language. So if English isn't your first language you've got a few options there to set um, between sort of German, Dutch, Spanish, French, Italian, Polish and Portuguese. Then we've got the system menu that shows us what version of the firmware we're on so currently I'm on the latest version, version 2.0.2 .2. and we can do a factory refresh reset here and we can also set the controller mode uh, if we're using this as a controller for an Evercade VS console um, but to do that you do need a special cable. And we've got some, uh, just some bump here about legal things for the cartridges. And some credits there uh, for some of the people who worked on the team that uh, designed and built this unit. Okay, so going through some of the games on here, we've got some classics like Dig Dug, Galaxian, uh, Metal Marines, Pac-Man, uh, uh, Xavius is that? Okay. I know the name uh, the game, but I can never quite know how to pronounce the name properly. Uh, we've got a couple that I don't, I've never heard of. Star Luster, uh, Quad Challenge, yeah, I do know that one. Um, Mappy and Mappy Kids. Um, I've heard of them, but not played them. Okay, so let's take a look at the first game on, on here that I'm going to look at. That's Dig Dug. So we have some options here. Uh, a little bit of details about the game itself. And we've got 
at uh, some controls, what the controls are for the game. And we can pick up the last save. So you can save games midway through and you can pick up your last save here. So let's go into that by going on the play option. So you can see here that uh, I've got it on full screen at the moment. I can go into the menu here and we can pick up our, do a quick save, load last save, uh, another save and load, controls, we can look at what the controls are on this menu. And we can go into the display options here. So I can set that back to pixel perfect, for example. When I go out there and you can see the artwork of the bezels as well. just quit out of that. Okay, so let's take a look at Galaxian now. Let's switch that screen back to full, uh, full screen. So as you can see, these are the console versions. I think these are probably the NES versions of the game, but that's no bad thing. They're good, good conversions. Uh, one thing to say about the Namco Museum cartridges uh, is that they can only be played for um, licensing reasons on the handheld units, so this one and the Evercade EXP, but they cannot be used on the Evercade uh, VS, which is the, the full sort of console version of the Evercade, uh, which incidentally I'll be looking at in my next video. Okay, so I'll just quickly run through uh, some of the games here. So we've got Pac-Man. And this, this controls very well with the D-pad. Um, you usually like to use a joystick to play Pac-Man with, but this is this is quite okay with this D-pad, it really feels quite good. Okay. And lastly, we'll look at this one. Okay, I'm now going to uh, swap this over to the uh, Atari cartridge and show that you can, uh, what you can do is you can hot swap the cartridges. So let's remove this cartridge. And I get the Atari one. And then hopefully if I just take the Atari cartridge now and plug that in, that should detect that and come up with the menu. So now I've got the uh, games from the Atari collection one on there. So this is a collection of 2600 and 7800 games uh, 20 in total on this one uh, including a couple of uh, games that are later releases so we've got Aqua Adventure here that uh, according to that was released in 2005 and I think there's Tempest on here as well uh, again released in 2005 so let's just try that one out again we've got details about the game the controls I believe this was a prototype um, that was never released. So it's quite a bit different to uh, in look to the arcade original, but you know, for the 2600, it's uh, a good effort. Okay, so let's just take a look at one other game on here. Um, So we've got Adventure, and there's Asteroids, which was uh, one of my favourite games on the 2600.
As you see, the emulation is pretty good on this. I think this is using the Stellar emulator. Uh, it's pretty rock solid as well, so... Okay, and lastly, let's just take a look at uh, the interplay cartridge. Okay, so I'm not really that familiar with any of the games on this particular cartridge other than Battle Chess. Um, and even that, I was used to playing it on um, the Amiga as opposed to this, which I think is probably the NES version. So, um, so we've got Battle Chess there, we've got Clay Fighter. Uh, Earthworm Gyms, well-known game. I've not, not played it myself, so let's have a look at that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's pretty obvious I don't know what I'm doing here, so... Um. But as you can see, it's, it's running it, so it's quite a sophisticated uh, game for uh, retro games um, in terms of graphics. And it runs perfectly well, no glitching, sound sounds great. Okay, so I guess the question is, with the Evercade EXP, is it still worth buying an original handheld Evercade? At full retail price, I'd say no. However, if you can find one of these discounted, or like me, you can find one secondhand, then I'd say yes. Especially if you go for the premium pack and you don't have the cartridges that come with it already. I've been pleasantly surprised with the Evercade handheld, especially given my reservations um, when it first came out. Um, I think it's a really great device. Um, it's a good quality device, and I haven't had any problems with any of the games I've played on it so far. I also like the design of the device. I think it's got a really nice look to it. It's quite retro in its appearance. And who knows, in time it may even become a collectible in its own right. Well, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, why not let me know by liking it with a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or you haven't done so already, then please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you'll get notified when I upload new content to the channel. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and wherever you are, stay safe, keep well, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Retro Now. Music